So what goes into making a bottle of spirits? Where does the alcohol come from? And how does distillation purify it? What happens after distillation? All right, guys, I'm going to run through each of those points. Let's do it. Hey guys, I'm Jesse. Welcome to Still It, the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it legitimate. Every week I'm going to be releasing new videos, videos just like this one for people getting started, videos about recipes, videos about the process of distillation, safety processes and things like that. Later on we're going to be running side by side tastings and guides to help you objectively assess your own product even better. And for the real distilling geeks out there we're going to be doing lab testing too. So if all of that sounds like something you're into, make sure you hit subscribe down below, ring that bell, and you won't miss anything. All right, now all of that is out of the way. This video is gonna be about the process of making spirits. Now, obviously that is an insanely large topic. So this is just an overview. Something just to get you started, to get you thinking about what you really wanna do, and give you a little bit of background knowledge. There's gonna be much more in-depth videos on the way, but if there's something in particular that you really want to see, drop a comment down below and I'll see what I can do to make it happen. So basically there's four really broad steps to distilling and making your own craft spirits. You need to get hold of some sugar, you need to ferment that sugar, distill it to purify it, and then in most cases you're going to age it as well. So let's go through those steps in a little bit more detail. First, we want the sugar. Later on, the yeast is going to turn that sugar into alcohol, so we're going to want a fair bit of it. In short, the more sugar you have, the more alcohol you're likely to have at the end. Obviously, one of the easiest ways to get sugar is just to buy it. Pretty much any sugar you can buy at the local supermarket is going to be able to be eaten by some yeast. You could also use fruit. Have a think about some common alcoholic drinks. Quite a lot of them are fruit-based. Grapes, pears, and apples are probably the most common. If you want to get a little bit more tricky, you can actually convert a source of starch into sugar. This is a pretty complicated topic. In fact, I'm probably going to make an entire playlist just for this. But really basically, what you do is make a mash. To make a mash, you take the starch source, put it into water, hold it at a specific temperature, and then let enzymes break those starches down into sugars. You can make this a super complex process, or you can let nature take its course and make it a little bit simpler. Common sources of starch for making alcohol are barley, rice, Wheat, barley, shit did I say barley, corn, barley, rice, wheat, rye, ah damn it, barley, rice, wheat, rye, corn, and even some root vegetables. So each of these sugar sources have their own pros, cons, and idiosyncrasies, but that's a topic for a whole other video. Let's just say that most varieties of spirits gain essential flavors and aromas from the sugar sources they use. So once the yeast have done their thing, we're left with a fermenter full of liquid with all sorts of things in it. That's called the wash. It has the things we want, like ethanol and the desired congeners. It also has the things we don't want, like methanol, we really don't want that, the undesirable congeners, and excess water. So by the way, congeners are basically anything other than ethanol or water. Things like methanol, acetaldehyde, acetone, and tannins. These things are going to make up most of the flavor and aroma of your beverage, either for the good or for the bad. Distilling gives us a way to separate all these different chemicals, pretty much because they have different boiling points. Chemicals with lower boiling points will turn into vapor first. We can then collect that vapor and separate them into different cups to be blended back together in the way we want later. Unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as it sounds. In the real world, just doesn't quite work that way. We can never completely separate one chemical from the other. In the real world, it's more of a gradient from beginning to end. Certain chemicals are more likely to show up at the beginning, the middle, or the end of the run, but it's pretty tricky to tell exactly when they're gonna show up. That's why the process of separating the vapors and then choosing which to keep and which to throw away is considered such an art. After distillation, we end up with a liquid much higher in alcohol, lower in bag congeners, and still retains a lot of the good congeners. At this stage, some products are pretty much ready to drink. Others, they're gonna need a little bit more love. The main ingredient here is gonna be time. Aging allows the spirit to mature. The harsh flavors and aromas will slowly subside, while the subtle complex flavors are gonna develop over time. Very, very often wood is gonna be involved in this process. Traditionally, in the form of barrels. 
For many home distillers, barrels are extremely inconvenient due to their size and their cost. Luckily, the community's come up with a whole lot of ways to basically fake it. These offer an easier, cheaper, and faster way to get a relatively comparable product. This is one of those topics that can be kind of hotly debated, so I'm looking forward to getting into some analysis and perception testing that can try to look at these things in a more objective way. I hope that sets you up with a little bit of background knowledge on distilling and the basic idea of what goes on. Yeah, I know, I know, we didn't go into any detail and I didn't really help you figure out how to make a tasty drink. Don't worry though, we're going to get into a lot more videos going into detail on each of those topics. So thanks for watching guys. If you liked the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and share it with anyone else you think that might be interested. So thanks guys. See ya.